All right, we're on. Welcome to the first quarterly exam review sheet for Altitude Trade. Your exam will either be on Thursday or Friday, depending on when you have me. Day, I don't know. I think I have period eight, 9 on the 6th of Friday and uh, 1 2 on Thursday the 5th. Let's get into the review. The sum of radicals. When you are adding radicals, you need to <coughs> reduce first. So, I'm going to reduce the cubed root of 6 a to the 4th b squared. And I'm going to reduce the cubed root of 162 a to the 4th b squared. I'm going to write out my perfect cubes. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. I also know that for exponents, multiples of 3 are perfect cubes. So I'm going to break this one down into perfect cubes and non-perfect cubes. Don't forget your little index of 3. 6 is not a perfect cube. Nothing can go into it. A to the fourth is not, so I bring it down to A to the third, and I put the extra A here. B squared is not, so that goes into the non-perfect cube. The cube root of A cube is A. The non-perfect cube comes down. Remember, when you take the cube root of a power, you divide the power by three. Perfect cube non-perfect cubes, index of 3. 162 is not on my list. It would fall here. I can't divide it by 125. Uh, I can't divide it by 64. I can divide it by 27. You can use your calculator to help you as well. A to the fourth is not a <clears throat> multiple of 3, so I bring it down to 3. I put the extra one in the non-perfect cube, and the b squared goes to the non-perfect cube. So, cube root of 27a cubed is 3a. Bring down the non-perfect cube, and I have them each reduced. Now that they're reduced, being how they have the same radicand, I can add them. I add my coefficients. 1a plus 3a is 4a. And I keep my cube root of 6a b squared. Now, we can also do this question using our multiple choice strategy. Now, my calculator is not as updated as yours, so yours will look a little bit cooler. But don't judge. I'm going to do the best I can with it. Yes, it turned on. So, for this strategy, Remember, first you have to set 10 arbitrarily as your x value. And because there's a second variable, I'm going to hit 15, store as alpha y. I'm going to type in the original problem. You type in cubed root. I go to option 4. Yours, again, looks different than mine. It's OK. I'm going to type x instead of a. So x to the power of 4 y to the power of 2 plus <clears throat> math for 162 x to the power of 4 alpha y to the power of 2. Second Math equals, I'm just going to go right to the answer because with yours, you can copy what you already typed in. With mine, I can't. So I'm going to type in 4x cubed root of 6xy to the power of 2. It gives me a 1, which means to equivalent. That looks really messy. Uh, when I say that, I mean this right here. In your calculator, it looks very nice. So 
utilize your strategies whenever you have the variables and the problem and in the answer. Um, let's do this one now. I'm not going to do it in the calculator again, but I am going to do it by hand. Product. When you're multiplying, you multiply first. You multiply your outsides. There are no outsides. You multiply your insides. 64, A to the fifth, B to the sixth. I prefer the multiplication division problems. Now, I can break it down into my perfect cubes and non-perfect cubes. My perfect cubes are 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. 64 is on my list. So the whole 64 goes in the perfect cube. A to the fifth, I bring it down to A to the third, because A to the third is a multiple of three. B to the sixth is a multiple of three, so that whole thing goes in the perfect cube. Now that I did that, I take the cube root. The cube root of 64 is four. A, B squared. Again, you're dividing the power by three when you take the cube root. That's trapped, the non-perfect cube is trapped, and I have 4a b squared cube root of a squared. Again, I can use my multiple choice strategy to do this one as well. I'm not going to. I don't like my calculator. Absolute value inequality. We have a song for the absolute values. Absolute value isolates. Are the absolute values bars isolated? Yes, they are. Once they're isolated, you create two equations or inequalities. You drop the bars on the first one and keep everything the same. On the second one, you switch the inequality and you negate the right-hand side. From here, solve each of them. Y is greater than negative 5. Y is less than negative 11. Your best bet from here, look at the original sign, convergent or divergent. It's divergent. So, know what a divergent graph looks like. I have negative 11, negative 3, open circle, shade away. That's what the graph would look like. Know what a divergent solution looks like. A divergent solution has an or. So, these are, these are convergent solutions. Which one has negative 11 and negative 5? Choice 1. Make sure you know what a convergent solution looks like, both graphically and the actual solution, and what a divergent solution looks like. Look it up in your key understanding. You need to know that. Number 4, same type of thing. I'm already isolated, so I need to create two inequalities. The first one, I just drop the bars and keep everything else the same. The second one, I switch the inequality and I negate the right hand side. From here, I solve. X is less than 5. x is greater than negative 6. The original problem, it's convergence. So, can't be this, can't be this. I have a positive 5 and a negative 6. That's my answer. Graphically, I've got negative 6, I've got positive 5, open circles, convergence. Did I put the right circles in the last problem? Yeah. All right. Subtracted from. From comes first. So it's 5 halves x squared minus 3 fourths x plus 1 minus 3 halves x squared minus 1 fourth x minus 4. To subtract polynomials, we keep the first one. Change subtracting to addition, and I change every sign in the second polynomial, including the first. That's algebra one. Now we combine like terms. That's algebra two. Again, you can just use your calculator to add these coefficients. Mine does not look as pretty, or else I would pull mine up. 
I can do it by hand because, well, I know how to deal with fractions. This is just 1 x squared. This is negative 2 fourths or negative 1 half plus 5. x squared minus 1 half x plus 5. Once you get to this point, you can also use that same multiple choice strategy. Again, I would type it in for you, but again, because of my software, it looks pretty bad. I'm trying to get new software on my computer, but it's not happening. Sorry. Now, this one you would not feel use a strategy because it is not multiple choice, but still, from comes first. So it's x squared plus x minus 1 minus 3 fifths x squared minus 2 fifths x plus 4 fifths. To subtract them, keep, change, change. One plus negative three fifths is positive two fifths. One plus two fifths is seven fifths. Negative one plus negative four fifths is negative nine fifths. Again, use your calculator to combine the fractions. Just type it in and you're fine. That's your answer. Do not get this wrong because you can't deal with the fractions. Use the calculator. F of G of X, you always start on the right. G of X equals 2X plus 1. There's nothing to plug in. So now that I have my 2X plus 1, I plug that into F. Whatever in the parentheses, I'm replacing the x with. So instead of x squared, it's 2x plus 1 squared. How do I square a binomial? I FOIL. I want more space. I'll change colors. 4x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 1, combine like terms, got your answer. At this point, you could have used a multiple choice strategy. F of g of x again, you always start at the right. g of x is x minus 9. I now take my x minus 9 and I put it in for f. Whatever is in the parentheses, I replace the x with. So it's 3 x minus 9 minus 5. Distribute. And I get 3 x minus 3. So f of g equals 3x Domain and range. You can't really see me right now, but to do domain, I hold my ruler vertically and I go along the x-axis. So I hold like that. Is there a graph there? No. 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 My graph starts at what x value? Negative 4. I have graph, 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 because the arrow is pointing to it. It goes on forever. It starts at negative 4. It goes on forever. In interval notation, it would look like this. Remember, infinity always gets a parenthesis. Negative 4 is included. Now, we are in set builder notation. So, obviously it's not choices three or four because that says it starts at two. It's got the equal, so it's got to be choice two. So let's do the range as well. For the range, I'm going to hold it horizontally and start at the bottom. Any graph down here? No. No, 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 no. My graph starts at two. I have graph, I have graph, I have graph. The arrow even though it's flattening out, it keeps on going forever. It's getting slightly bigger, so it's going on to infinity. That's my range. And of course, this is that in set dollar.
a lot less messy if you just use your pen and you can climb up the axes like I told you. Range, again, we're holding horizontally and we're going up the y-axis. Nothing down here, nothing down here. It starts at a thousand. I have graph, I have graph, I have graph. It stops at a 200. Those values are both included, so we get brackets in set builder notation. You have choice. In case you're wondering, the domain of this one would be choice. Quadratic inequality. Ignore the inequality. Treat it like an equation. Mr. X squared, he wants to party. Can he party right now? No, we got to bring 18 over. X squared plus 3X minus 18 equals 0. Party time. Bubbles. It's a trinomial. We factor the trinomial. I don't know why I'm scratching myself in this little corner here. I have all the space to work with, but what can I say? X equals negative 6. X equals positive 3. Now, I've got negative 6. I've got positive 3. There's no equals, so it's open circles. It's convergent, so I shade between them. And know how to write your convergent solution. It's always less than x than less than. Smaller number comes first, bigger number comes last. Another example. I'll try and get away from the edge this time. Mr. X squared, he wants to party. He can't party right now because everybody's got to come over. Now that everybody comes over, party time. First sign comes down, negative comes to positive, and negative 6 and 4. Set each factor equal to 0. All right, a little bit better this time in my space. X equals 6. X equals negative 4. Number line time. I've got negative 4. I've got positive 6. It's got the equals, so it's closed circles. It's divergent, so it's shade away. Again, in case I didn't already mention it, less than is convergent in the original problem and greater than is divergent. Know how to write your divergent solution. It's always x is less than the smaller piece or x is greater than the bigger one. A function is defined by the equation y equals 3x plus 2. It's fantastic. Which equation defines the inverse? You need to know what inverse means. Switch x and y. So, I'm going to write x equals 3y plus 2. Now I solve it for y. Minus 2, minus 2, x minus 2 equals 3y. Divide by 3, divide by 3. You can leave it like that, but because you see that the answer, you divide each of them. 1x over 3 is 1 third x minus two-thirds, that is choice number three. Inverse, switch x and y. You also need to know this notation. This means f inverse. So, instead of f of x equals, I'm going to write y equals, and then I switch x and y. You can edit on this marker in this board. y equals x plus 7 over 5. Because it's not multiple choice, I can leave it like that, but just make sure we ask for f inverse of x. You write it as f inverse of x. Inverse, which x and y. A one-to-one -one function has to pass the vertical line test. This 
This one's good. This one's not. This one's good. This one's good. Those are all functions, but a one-to-one -one function has to also pass the horizontal line test. It's about to get really messy, so I'm going to erase my vertical lines. So we could actually see my horizontal lines. They all hit once. This one's good. This one we already said is not a one-to-one -one function. It's not a function. This one fails. This one fails. The only one that passes both the vertical and the horizontal line test is choice one. Even though this choice does pass the horizontal line test, because it did not pass the vertical line test, it can't be a function, nor a one-to-one -one function. In 16, I gave you equations. Well, your best bet is to look at them. I'm going to pull up my calculator. My old, awful, I'm trying to think of a word I can actually use in this thing, calculator, and look at the graphs. Y equals, what is this that wow. I don't want to worry about stats until the fourth one. X squared plus 2. Let's do zoom 6 to get a nice picture. Okay, let's try to get zoom 6. Does that pass the vertical line test? Yes, but it does not pass the horizontal line test. So that one's not going to happen. Where did my calculator go? There it is. Let's now try x to the third. Plus 2. Passes the vertical. Passes the horizontal. That's a one-to-one -one function. Let's just take the rest of them to make sure. Absolute value of x plus 2. Y equals. Math. Num. ABS. Aren't you so happy to have these new fancy calculators? I don't have to deal with this weird ABS and all this other garbage that I've been dealing with. Whoops, I messed up. Absolute value of x plus 2. You don't have to worry about that. Graph. It passes a vertical lock. Oh my god. What was that? It passes the vertical line test, but it does not pass the horizontal line test. And x to the fourth plus two. <coughs> x to the power of four plus two. It passes the vertical, but not the horizontal. So if they give you equations, just grab it and When you see this, you have to think of your transformation rules. You need to know your transformation rules. You need to study your transformation rules. Addition is translations. Plus 1 to the x means left 1. Plus 2 to the whole thing means up 2. So I have to take this parabola and move it left 1 and up 2. So I'm going to take all the nice points and move them left 1, up 2. Here's another nice point. 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 Left one, up two. Here's another one. Left one, up two. And here's another one, up one, left one, up two. Uh, not a perfect parabola because I connected the wrong point. label what this is. This is f of x plus 1 plus 
next one's very similar. This minus 2. Well, first of all, what's going to graph this thing? So that we haven't really graphed it here, but you graph 20 through alpha 1 in geometry, so I expect you're able to, to graph this. Uh, x squared minus 4x plus 3. Look at your table. Look at a mirror image. There it is. And copy it down. So it's negative 1 to 5. And we got 8, 3, 0, negative 1. And then it's been So I got negative 1, 8. I've got 0, 3. I've got 1, 0. I've got 2, negative 1. I've got 3, 0. I've got 4, 3. I've got 5, 8. And I go on a parabola. That's a on the same set, well, again, I see a transformation. This minus 2 to the x is telling me to go right to, and this minus 3 to the whole thing is telling me to go down 3. So, take all the points. Right 2, down 3. Right 2, down 3. Go on this point here. Uh, sorry, this point. Right 2, down 3. 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 You know your rules. Make sure you know your rules. Study your rules. Simple as that. Have someone quiz you on it. Your three-year-old brother, your six-year-old niece, whatever. When air is pumped into an automobile tire, the pressure is inversely proportionate. That means the same thing as varies inversely, which means x y equals x y. You better not get this question wrong. Twenty pounds when the volume is a hundred. Twenty times a hundred. Fifty. X. That is 2,000 equals 50x, divide by 50, divide by 50, that's x equals 40. 40 what? 40 pounds. Simple question as long as you know what to do when you see inversely proportionate or varies inversely, xy equals xy. The mass of an object is inversely proportionate again. Sweet, simple, as long as I know to do x, y equals x, y. 220. And x. That is 4,000 equals 10x. That is 400. 400 what? 400 kg. Kilograms. Complex fraction. I want to get rid of fractions. To get rid of fractions, I know to multiply by the LCD. If you don't know to multiply by the LCD to get rid of fractions, I don't know what you were doing for the count. The LCD, the only denominator is x. So, my top left, I have x squared. <coughs> my top right, my x and my x cancel, I'm left with 4. My bottom, my x and my x cancel, I'm left with 2 plus x. I got rid of the complex fraction. From here, to reduce a fraction, you need to factor. You need to factor. Know your factoring song. Look for GCF, dots, trinomials, bridge, grouping. You can't just something you factor any further. On top, no GCF, but it is dots. So, Two sets of parentheses, plus minus, square root of each, always for dots. Bottom, no GCF, no dots, no trinomials, no bridge, no grouping, I can't factor. Cancel common factors. 2 plus x and x plus 2 cancel. We do not put negative 1. If they were both minus, I would put negative 1, but they're not. My answer is x minus 2. I 
see a 2, I see a D, I see more Ds and more 2s and more Ds, but I don't care. I see a 2 and a D. The only LCD is 2D. 2 and 2 cancel, I'm left with D times 1, which is D. D and D cancel, I'm left with 4 times 2, which is 8. D and D cancel, I'm left with 2 times 1, which is 2. 2D and 2D cancel, I'm left with 3. Combine like terms. Can't factor anything, can't reduce anything. Practice. We have lots and lots of examples for complex fractions. Well, Mr. X to the third is the same as Mr. X squared. Any polynomial equation, you want to start by bringing everything over to one side. Is everything over to one side? Can you plug it right now? Yes. So, to solve polynomial equations, we need to now factor. GCF, no. Dots, no. Trinomials, no. No bridge. Grouping, yes. When you have four terms, it's grouping. The GCF for the first half is x squared. Because this is a plus and this is a minus, I have to take out a negative. None. And these should always match. Now that you did that and we have like terms, I combine the coefficients and I keep the like terms. Can you factor any further? Yes. Dots. Square root of e, x, x, 3, 3. Can I factor any further? No. Set each factor equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 10 equals 0. Solve each of them. x equals negative 3. x equals 3. x equals negative 10. You do not have to check polynomial equations. Fractional, yes. Absolute value, yes. Again, it's a polynomial equation. Everyone's over, so we group because there's four terms. Uh, four x squared. Now, for this one, there's no common factor, but because this is a plus and this is a minus, I have to take out a negative one. Now I combine my coefficients, 4x squared minus 1, 2x plus 3. Can you factor any further? Yep, that's facts. Look for it. It might not pop out at you. Plus minus, square root of each. 2x, 2x, 1, 1. Set each factor equal to 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0, 2x minus 1 equals 0, 2x plus 3 equals 0. Solve each, x equals negative 1 half. x equals positive 1 half. Can you make it into decimals? Sure. Generally, though, you'll see the answer is press at the front. Almost there. Multiplying rational expressions. The key is to factor. Now, before I do that, though, I see division. And in order to do division, I keep change. So, I'm going to keep everything. Just rewriting. But whatever comes after the division, I change the division to multiplication, and I flip. Whatever comes after that. 
Now it's time to factor. If it's something substantial, like bridge method or grouping, I'm going to do it off to the side. So up here, I have grouping. I know there's multiple steps in that, so I'm going to do that off to the side over here. So I have x to the third minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 18. I got x squared, x minus 3. I got 6, x minus 3. So when I combine my coefficients, I get x squared plus 6, x minus 3. So I want to rewrite everything factored, but again, anything with multiple steps like grouping or bridge, I'm going to do it off to the side. So this became x squared plus 6, x minus 3. For each one, I'm going through my song. GCF, yes. Can I factor further? No. GCF, yes. Can I factor further? No. GCF, yes. A lot of GCF on this example. Can I factor further? No. GCF, no. Dots, yes. She has the parentheses, plus minus, square root of each. Make sure you keep the order the same. The 4 has to come first. I guess the 16 comes first. GCF, no. Dots, no. Trinomials, yes. Now the fun part. Time to cancel stuff. I see x minus 3 and x minus 3. I see x minus 2 and x minus 2. I see 4 plus x and x plus 4. Those cancel cleanly because it's a plus. I see 4 minus x and x minus 4. Well, those cancel to negative 1. Let's see what I have left. On top, I have negative 1, positive 2, x squared plus 6. My single terms, negative 1 and 2 is negative 2, x squared plus 6. On bottom, I have x and x to the third, that's x to the fourth. You can leave it in factored form, or you could have distributed either way. It's equivalent. I got one more, don't I? Whew. All right, no problem. I got to get rid of my division, so I'm going to keep everything. Fun. Change division multiplication. Flip. Factoring time. Top left. Well, no GCF. No dots, the trinomial is bridge. So because it's bridge and there's multiple steps to bridge, I'm going to do that one to the side. Don't forget to change the total, let's come later. x squared plus 5x minus 14. x plus 7, x minus 2, change the total. If it divides nicely, divide it. If not, put the denominator in front. So, that's 2x plus 7, x minus 1. GCF, yes, 2x. GCF, no, dots, no, trinomials, yes. GCF, yes. It's a single term, so I'm just going to leave it for now. GCF, yes. 2x plus 7s, x minus 3s, x minus 1 and 1 minus x becomes negative 1. Now, with my 2s and my 8s and my x's, let's do that in the next step. I can do it now, but it might be a little more clear if we do it in the next step. On top, I have negative 1, 8x squared, x minus 1. So that's negative 8x squared, x minus 1. On bottom, I have 2x, 2, 2, that's 8x. It might be a little more clear to see now, I can cancel my 8s. 
and you could have canceled it in the previous step, but it might not have been as clear. And one of the square, one of the x's, cancels with that. So I'm left with negative x, x minus 1. You can leave your answer like that, or you could have distributed by the way. I'm done. You're not done. You've got to study, you got to practice, because watching me do this is not enough. If you get stuck, refer back to this, but you need to practice the problem. Doing one problem is not going to be enough for you to necessarily get it right in the test. You have plenty of resources, you have plenty of worksheets. Study your key understandings, especially those translation rules. Um, know your songs. They're very helpful. We only have two so far. Make sure you know them. Make sure you know your convergent, divergent. And please, spend time, practice, and study. Hear the answers one more time. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. If I did, oh well. I'm sure I'll hear from you all very soon, but I probably didn't. 41 minutes. Bye.